people will think that you are the bad seed, that you are infertile if you don't have children. You're a monster. The minute that you kind of hit what society deems as the time to have kids, it's like, um, Wait till hello? you're 30. Then you, you know? start, everyone will start to remind you your age. I do wake up thinking, oh my God, who's going to look after me when I'm 80? Ooh. Welcome to the She Word, conversations that women rarely have, but really should. I'm so excited. We are well into season three of the She Word and I've already had some incredible shows, some incredible discussions. And of course, I just want to remind you that there's so much more coming to the She Word, not just this season, but a whole bunch of other things as well. So right now, right there, you're going to find the subscribe button. Make sure you hit and so you'll be notified of all the incredible stuff that we have coming up. Also, if you are a Patreon subscriber, welcome. A special welcome to you because of course you're seeing this way before anybody else and just by being a Patreon subscriber also means that you are doing some incredible good because 50% of the profits of our Patreon subscriptions go to the Richmond Foundation to support women who need therapy or guidance but simply can't afford it. So a special thank you for that. Into our third season of The She Word, and so far we've touched on women and parenting twice in previous seasons, and also women and infertility, women and pregnancy and postpartum. So when one of my guests today contacted me and suggested that we had a show on women who don't have children, I suddenly realized we were missing out on a huge percentage of women. Women who, like myself, don't have children, either because they can't or because they've chosen not to. So this is a show all about women being child free. And I am really excited because I have three amazing guests with me today. I'm going to start with Helen. Hello, Helen. Helen Chorley, British-born Helen, has had a long relationship with Malta over the past years before making Malta her home more recently. A former investment banker who discovered spirituality after the trading floor took its toll on her health, Helen has been on a journey of self-discovery since the financial crash of 2008 in the UK and is now a presenter and keynote speaker on investment and all things financial. I'm going to give you um, an opportunity in a second, Helen, to fill in the gaps there, but thank you so much for being on this show. Pleasure. Maria. Maria McAuliffe is a content creator, a fashion stylist, and also key player in Eurosport and the communications that we see all over social media. It was Maria that contacted me and suggested that we have this show on women without children. And what a great idea. And I love the fact you just grabbed your glass of wine there. <laughs> You're like, let's do this. Absolutely. Yes. And Alex Gaglioni, who is a trainee law associate and ex-president of the University Student Union, KSU. You're also an activist, passionate about human rights, and often speaking out about the things that really matter. And when Young Women's Edition host Sasha asked if there were any young women who wanted to come on this show, you jumped in and said, yes, yes, I want to be here. So I want to find out why. So I've introduced you, but I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to fill in the gaps. Helen, tell me a little bit more about you. Sure. Um, I've been living in Malta for four years, but I fell in love with it 15 years ago because my parents have been coming here for 60 years. Um, so it was an absolute no brainer when I left banking and made some change in my life to be here um, and that was made easier you know kind of leading into the top today's topic because I don't have there's no husband there's no kids it's just kind of me and I have a difficulty enough managing that <laughs> if I'm entirely <laughs> honest to be honest so um, yeah now I'm uh, so from banking then I went into property investment and I do that remotely it's all in the UK so I am not responsible for anything all these monstrosities in Malta all my stuff's <laughs> in the UK um, but I yeah I, I'm based here and I absolutely love it and yeah never going back brilliant well I, I'm so excited that you're here uh, because I've been following you and, and I kind of did a bit of research. I, I, I stalked you <laughs> and, and then ascertained that you didn't have children and delicately approached you and said, would you be on this show? Because it's actually quite an awkward conversation to yeah. say, listen, you know, can, I, can you come and talk about 
not having children. Maria, on the other hand, contacted me and said, we've known each other for a long time. Yes, yes. So I was hearing your podcast about um, fertility and um postpartum and I was like Trudy some women don't want children why don't you put a podcast but I did not expect myself to be here talking <laughs> <laughs> listen if you put your hands up to me I'm gonna get you on the show right <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much for the suggestion because I think it, it really is important. We're going to come to the statistics in a minute and the statistics speak for themselves. But Alex, okay, so Sasha puts out this post and says, young women, anyone going to come and talk yeah. about, you know, not wanting to have kids or, or not am having any ambition yeah. to have kids and you just jump straight in. I said yes every day because her question was like, um, how many how many of you like to not, how many of you like to speak about not having kids? And I literally answered her in seconds. I was like, me every day. <laughs> she was like, oh, okay. And um, I'm really thrilled. But a little bit more of background about you because you are, as I said, you're, you're training to be a lawyer. Yes. Um, and I think uh, kind of based on our conversation earlier, that's kind of a battle that I've always had and that uh, I'm, I acknowledge the fact that I'm very young. I'm only 23. Um, and I know that I still have a long way to go, hopefully with with life. But it's always been a sentiment that I felt really strongly about and I think certain ambitions that I have with my life and my career and the way that I want to kind of spell out my life a lot of it is centered around the fact that I just simply don't want to have children um, and the answer is really simple but I think and I think we'll have ample time to to discuss my as in the reasons why but it's just how I've always felt and I think the older I get the stronger I feel about it so I'm super grateful to have well I, you know we spoke about this like you said before before we sat down around this table and I'm really excited because we've actually got three different age groups here yes. we've got 20s 30s and 40s and we Helen and I are in the same age bracket and we're actually if you don't mind me saying we're at the point where there is no option now we neither of us have family but but it's not something that we can consider so we're actually as you said looking mm -hmm. at this from three completely mm -hmm. different yes. viewpoints and I'm excited for that so I want to do want to run some statistics past you uh, because while deciding to against having children is nothing new a trend for owning that child-free label and discussing this choice more openly is picking up pace. That is new. In the US, a 2021 Pew Research study showed some 44% of non-parents aged 18 to 49 don't think they will have children, up from the 37% in 2018. More than half listed their main reason as I don't want children rather than circumstantial factors such as medical issues or not wanting to raise a child without parents. In England and Wales, a 2020 YoGov study showed that more than half of the British 35 to 44 year olds who don't have kids never plan on doing so. And surveys of childless women tell us that the top reason is not career, lifestyle, or financially related, it's that they just haven't found the right partner and they don't feel that it's appropriate. This was the second most common reason given in a representative UK study of 42-year-old childless women right behind not wanting to have kids. So ladies, I want to jump straight into this one and I'm gonna not mince my words. I'd like to find out what your motivation is for making that choice not to have kids. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna start with, with Helen. Yeah, absolutely. I knew it, it, it almost like wasn't a decision. I just knew mm -hmm. there was something in me from being a child myself. That I, long? Yeah. Yes. That long. I, I was never a kind of, you know, all my, all my friends at age, I don't know, seven, eight, were getting baby dolls and prams and pushing them around, pushing them around, you know, the block. And I think I got one from peer pressure. My mum was like, you use it once on Christmas Day. You never touch that thing again. I just knew that there was no point at which I ever was like, oh, oh I won't make you. I don't, I almost feel like maybe I don't have that gene or that. I just didn't. So by the time I, you know, we were talking about these things in teenage years, I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely knew that. I'm like, this is not, it's not for me. It's not my choice. It's not, I just don't have that urge kittens it's a different thing I have a kitten <laughs> any day of the week babies no thank you but it's interesting that you say that because of pushing around a pram with a, a baby doll I mean I didn't have that either 
Uh, and I think you also talked about the choices. I think for me, I've always stipulated that you make a choice to have children, not a choice not to have children. We're going to talk about yeah. that. And in my instance, you know, that choice was actually taken away from me anyway. I had not decided to have kids, but it turns out that I couldn't. But I think that we, we address that choice as part of this discussion. But, Maria. <laughs> Hi. You contacted me. You talked about choosing yes. not to have kids. What was your motivation for not having kids? I think I was like Helen. I never was the girl carrying the pram when I was young. I mean, I always was dressing up the dolls, making them makeup and um, their hair, but I was never like taking care of them. Um, when I, I must admit that in my teenage years, I used to think that it was cute to be a mom and to have babies because obviously... You're a teenager, you have no responsibilities, you don't know what the value of money is, you don't know that you need to wake up and go to, you, you know, nothing, you know, you're just there and being taken care of by your parents and that's all. So for you, you think it's something cute, you know. Mm -hmm. But when I started to grow up, like I was a, like 17 and I started hanging up with people who are older than me and they had kids, I realized that I don't want to spend my Sundays at the park. I don't want to spend my nights, you know, changing diapers. I, 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 I wasn't seeing these babies cute anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are cute, but not in the cute way that I was expecting me to feel. I was not feeling like the urge, yes, yes, I want to be a mom. So when people were asking me, because some people have the decency to ask, I was like, maybe when I'm 25, maybe when I'm 28, maybe when I'm 30, but hello, now I'm 31. I still, I still do not feel that urge and thank God that I managed to find a partner who is like me because that was our first discussion on our first date because I was so traumatized that whenever you meet a guy and he tells you like, I really want to have kids in the future and you tell him, no, it's not in my plan. Oh, you will change your mind. No, I won't change <gasps> your mind. That is not something that oh, is yeah. that you will change. So it's common. not like oh, I'm yeah. thinking of eating yesterday and I'm going to eat pasta and I changed my mind. Yeah. It's about a human being. Yeah. So I, I, I took the decision and I thought this, this is going to be on my own terms. And so I think I, I think I was lucky because at the age of 18, I met my boyfriend. Um, and I remember he tell, told me, like, I really want to start something serious. I really see something serious with you. I told him, wait, look, I know we're still on the first date, but I need to be clear <laughs> with you <laughs> on your first day. Yes, I told him we we're talking. Now that we're talking, I think I should tell you. But listen, I am 18. I don't <laughs> want to have kids. I don't know when I'm 25 if I, I want feel? kids, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like, but I don't want to break your heart. I don't want my heart <laughs> broken. It's like, it's on my own terms. And he was like, I was referring to have a stable relationship <laughs> going out together because neither do I. I don't want kids. So I was like, okay, oh, yes, no. that, that's a We're deal good. now. <laughs> because I was so frustrated that, you know, you meet people and for them, you are just a womb. That mm -hmm. for, for me, it was something disrespectful. Yes. Wow. I mean, the pair of you have blown open the podcast already and we haven't even gotten to Alex. I'm going to get you to take a breath for a second because I feel like we, we could just let Maria have her own show here, right? Because you've touched on a lot of things and one thing that I'm just going to come back to from something that you both said, you didn't have that urge. And when I had a show on infertility, Karen Schranz said that when she was a kid, from the minute she yes. could speak, she wanted to have a family. And I think, wow. and even wow. Maxine and, and Tez all been on the show. They've all talked about this. Parents who've been on the show have said the same thing. They've said they knew they wanted to be parents. And you're yeah. saying you knew you didn't. Yes. Yeah. But Alex, you see, you know, Helen and I are a little bit older and we've passed that yeah. that opportunity. Maria's made up her mind. She's found her life partner and they, they've agreed on the same thing. But respectfully, you're 23 and you've made this choice. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you, as you openly said, you're becoming more and more adamant about it. Yes. So at 23, why? What is your motivation for not wanting to have a family? I mean, interestingly, my answer is practically identical. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I just always knew that I just, I didn't want to be a mother and I didn't want to have children. Obviously, when you're like six, seven, eight years old, saying kind of, it's, it's a pretty bold statement, I think, for, for anyone to make, yeah. let alone like a child. <laughs> um, but I always got kind of like the same answer. Oh, no, you'll meet a boy that you really like and you'll have, you know, you'll change your mind and you want to start a family. 
And it was just never something I related to. And the older I got, the less I related to it. So even kind of, you know, when you're in your teen years and you start kind of like, you know, navigating romantic relationships and liking boys or whatever. Um, it was just something that I really, really didn't relate to. And the older I get, the more I dis distance myself from, from being a mother. And I distance myself from motherhood from my own perspective, if that, if that makes sense, because it's motherhood is definitely something that I, I have a profound respect for. I mean, the most inspirational women in my life sure. are my mother and my yeah. grandmother. Um, and I, I love the link and the relationship that we have between us. And I know that the basis of that link is motherhood, but it's just simply, it's never been anything that I really wanted to explore myself. That said, I had plenty of baby toys and I had a pink pram and I had all of those sorts of toys. I just I just loved anything pink and any toy that was given to me. So I would just um I, I kind of still still played in those types of but still it was just something as I never really related to and I still don't relate to and I don't really think I will. Um and again kind of because I'm so young, the immediate response I get is, oh but you're still young. I, I know I'm still young and I, and I acknowledge that and I know that it would be silly of me to say that, I don't know, maybe in five, six, seven years time, my priorities might change and my, my wants might change. And that's fine. But it's also equally fine to just be 23 or be seven and say, I don't want to have children. I think that that, you know, people should just stop there and say, OK, you know, it's like I say, if I don't want to drink a glass of water, oh, OK, you know, and it should just stop there. But I think we're so used to having to justify our reasons why because people just yeah. aren't okay with that simplicity people aren't okay with a woman just saying i don't want to or i've just never felt the urge so there doesn't have to be some big traumatic reason behind and there are women who unfortunately do have um uh, you know more emotionally fueled reasons but there are women who don't and it's completely fine what if you could start your journey over start here and start again there that's how life works in a circular way we understand the importance of circles, and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. You said something really important, I think, there. You said that you respected your mother and your grandmother, and I think it's really important to acknowledge that just because we don't have families and, and maybe have chosen not to, doesn't mean to say that we don't respect motherhood. No. I think oh it's it, a natural fact. I admire mothers. Yes. I admire more. mothers because they are constantly 24 7 taking care of another human being. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot do that. If I want to sleep, I want to sleep. Yeah. So for me to see a mother, like my mom used to wake up during the night because we're sick and take care of us. And in the morning, she still wakes up to clean and to, to prepare food and everything. I am like, she has superpowers because, yeah. because I don't, I don't do it. Even if I, like after, uh, like, like, you know, after work, I, I don't even have, you know, the strength to do more things sometimes. Like, how? But does your mom work? Yes, now at, the, at that time she didn't use, she was full-time mommy, but still she had three kids. Like, like once I, I, I looked, I looked at her now after I babysit and I told her, how, oh, how did you take care of three children? <laughs> like, how? Because I babysit for two hours and I'm like drained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm yeah. done. Like, like, you know, it is a really... Helen's I with really, you on that I, one. Oh, I have respect so to moms and I have respect that they need to go through the pregnancy and everything. So I really have huge respect. But me, for me, I don't think it's something which is for me. But like, it is, it's like any other thing. Like some people, it's not in them to be huh, a doctor. Yeah. And for me, it's not in, in me to, to be, be a, a mom. You, yeah. Before you jump in there, Helen, I will just say that a lot of people think that because you are a woman and you have the opportunity to have children, 
that's why you would be more inclined to have children. Whereas with a doctor, you know, I'm just kind of yes, just true. breaking down the argument just before anybody who's watching suddenly jumps in and went, what? They're comparing being a mother to a doctor? <laughs> no, that's not what we're saying. Helen, you were, everybody's nodding away at the table. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are resonated, isn't there? I mean, I very much echo kind of what you said about respect and and my mother. My mother's basically the reason kind of I went to university because she did her degree. She had a full-time job. She had two kids. I was two. My brother was 10 when she started her degree. That's and she had a husband and a house to manage. And then she she did her degree kind of part time, went to night school and she's doing and and she was very determined. She's like, you will not like obviously it was hard. She's like, you will not do that. You will go to university. I knew from being like, again, as soon as I could talk to, <laughs> I knew I was going to university, didn't know what university was, but I knew I was going because she was determined you will go, you will get your degree, then you do what you want, yeah. but you will not do that basically you will not do like the hard way like she had to manage in a full time job and kids and a home she's like you will yeah you will in fact that, i think so. uh, from my end the, the one thing that i respect the most is or rather are the personal sacrifices mm. my mother had to make to raise me as and both my parents too but since we're i guess on the theme of, of motherhood i i think that that's that's more relevant that i know that there are certain things and certain goals that my mom maybe wanted to explore that she couldn't because she was raising my brother and i and and I don't think I would have been able to do 90% of the things that I've done to the ability that I've been able to do them. And even anything as in in the future that I owe so much to the sacrifices that both my parents made. Because I'm sure my dad will watch and be like, oh, I'm here as well. <laughs> um, and rightly so, obviously. But again, it's, it's and I, I, I just owe it. I owe so much to her because I know that, you know, we're very similar. And I know that deep down, you know, 20 year old Alex and, and 20 year old Antonella, because my it's my mom's name. We had very similar goals and very similar, you know, we wanted to take a very similar path in life, you know, but she kind of took that step back to kind of look back at me and watch me mm. move forward, if that makes sense. And I, I, so it's something that I really appreciate. And it's one thing as I really like rant about when I'm having this discussion that it has nothing to do with me not appreciating okay. motherhood. Not at all. No, I'm profoundly, I'm profoundly knocked out by the fact that that this podcast has started just by being so respectful of yeah. women who do yes. have children. And this is not a show about, you know, mothers are no good and mothers. It's a show oh. about we have paramount respect for mothers. Oh. And that's not, not the choice that we wanted. I want to ask you, picking up on that, so Maria, you mentioned sleep quite a lot. Um, <laughs> I think but what, <laughs> what are you seeing as the general advantages? Before we talk, to, talk about anything else, what are you seeing for your life that is the general advantages of being child-free? I think the fact that I can wake up in the morning and I can go through my schedule like without thinking of another person that I need to take care of. That that is really that I that is a huge advantage. I mean, I don't when you when you have children, there are people who are depending on you. You can like it's not like me. If I'm if I'm hungry and I'm not in the mood to, to cook, I don't cook. But if my child is hungry, I need to cook for him or her. Like I cannot leave them, you know, without food. So the fact that I do not have to take care of another person, the responsibility, the commitment, I'm a very committed person. Whoever knows me, I'm a very committed person. But the fact that I do not have to be committed to another, I need to raise a person. Like I need to, I, I, I need to give the, the best to this person, this human being as much as possible. So the fact that I don't need to think about that every morning, it's a relief. Even the fact that I can do whatever I want. Like, I can want to go there. I want to stay on the sofa tonight. I want to go out. It doesn't matter. I don't have to take my kids to the football or there. It's like me. It's my life. It's me and my partner. And I have my family and my friends. But that's me. That's just, I decide what I do with my life. I think when you have kids, it's not your decision anymore of what you do with your life. I mean, I, I can see it again from my parents. If we're going out and I'm sick, we have to stay home. Like when I was young, obviously not now. If I'm sick and my mom had something to do, really, 
even if she wanted to work, she couldn't go because I'm sick and she had to take, mm. she has to take care of me. And I'm really respectful about that. And I'm really grateful that I had a mom who gave it all to me and to my sisters. But I don't want to do that. Like maybe it sounds selfish, but I'm not here no, to do you, that. You have identified what's the advantage? Not having that responsibility. Helen, you know, you've had a, a life of child free. Yeah. What has been the advantages for you? I mean, it's very much that freedom, that autonomy mm -hmm. is kind of what you're saying, that it's like I get to choose, but also that flexibility. Yes. I want to go, you know, I, I work for myself. So again, I, I have that kind of autonomy and flexibility, but it's like, I want to go to London tomorrow. Right, great. It's book a flight. Let's go. There's no, who's going to mind them? Da, da, da. Is it term yes. time? There's none of those other considerations. And honestly, the lack of pressure, uh, uh, you know, of that, of, of not having that responsibility <laughs> is, it's quite liberating. I have to, I have to, I have to tell you. Have to <laughs> and there's a the voice of experience. Uh, For you, I mean, obviously, I should imagine that the, not an awful lot of your peers are having families just yet. No. <laughs> well, what are the advantage, advantages that you envisage? I think for me, and again, I, I'm going to go back to my previous point because, you know, my mother really set the path for me that I was always, I always had the privilege and the luxury to focus on, on school, to focus on academics, to, you know, kind of go through the path of passing my exams, graduating, doing whatever I wanted to do academically. So then obviously the older you get, you know, then there's, I think when you're, let's say, academically inclined, let's say that you then kind of transition into being more career driven. Let's say that you say, okay, I've studied for uh, quite some time. Um, so now I kind of want to translate that into work, you know, and I've always imagined myself and maybe it's, it was me as a child romanticizing being a lawyer and being, let's say, what we call like a career woman. But I do think that there is a relationship between that, like, me romanticizing having a career and my decision also to to not have kids and that I love the idea that if I would like to get another master's later on in life and I want to do it I want to go abroad to do another master's I have you know the flexibility and the ability mm -hmm. to do that if I would like to get my PhD eventually and I want to pursue that full time I can do that if I would like to pursue a legal career abroad I also have the flexibility to do that and I think you know, we speak a lot about selfish, selfishness, but like we were kind of discussing before, there's also a lot of selflessness behind it because yeah. it's like, I know I want to do a lot in life, which will be very difficult to do with kids, but it would be difficult to do with kids out of respect and, and dignity to those children that you obviously want to give kids your all. And if I would have to have kids, I would obviously want to give them my all because that is what I had. Mm. And um, to society as well. Exactly. Like, that's what we talked about. Like it's, you want to, to bring up, do the best, you know, I think all of us want to do the best at whatever we're doing, be that exactly. a job, yes. be that motherhood, be that whatever. Because you want to bring up a well-adjusted child. Exactly. If you're not there and you're absent, like what what exactly. are you bringing into society? Um, like, that's not fair. Exactly. And I think because I had such a great example of what parenthood is, I know, you know, and I know I keep kind of going back to that point, but it, mm. uh, ironically enough, it plays such a massive role in, in my decision and the way that I feel about it. And I also see that... Um, you also, as in becoming a mother is, you know, great in, in and of itself, but you also lose a massive part of your own identity and your oh, sense of self. Yes, for sure. And uh, in a in a way, I am very, I wouldn't say possessive, let's say I'm very protective over my sense of self and my identity. And I'm kind of in that phase in my life where I'm discovering who the adult version of myself is. And you kind of start to like the adult version of yourself and you start to like the financially independent adult side of yourself because you can kind of pursue things that you want to do when you don't need to rely on anyone to do it. And it's like, do I want to lose that? No, I don't. There's so much that we've covered. I mean, financial independence, the ability to study, the, the, there's again, the respect for, for, for the children, yep. for, for the fact that we know it's a serious role. And I think there's a lot of women, there's a lot of women we've had on this show, Helga Alul uh, being one of them, uh, Maria um, and, and Lara, who are both lawyers, who also ha went to university to study yeah. after they had families, but they always talk about how difficult it is and how much the challenge has been. Yeah. 
And I think just the fact that you mentioned that role model of your mom is just brilliant. You know, you said there's a high standard of yes. what a family should be. Yes. And I know that my ambitions would compromise that. Yes. And I think that is flipping awesome. I want to be more exp uh, um, more specific. And I think this probably applies maybe Helen, for you and I, a little bit more than than these ladies, because these ladies are a little bit younger. But is there a, is there an experience or an adventure or a career path that you can clearly attribute to being child free? Um, I mean, I started. I'm, I'm in property kind of now. Um, I was in banking before that, and I was working on a trading floor, which is super kind of high stress. Um, and there were mums, there weren't many women full stop on the trading floor, to be honest. Um, and there were mums in it, uh, on the trading floor, in that environment. But again, like it's the negativity around like you have to leave because your child is mm. sick or whatever. It's just really wasn't tolerated because none of the guys were doing that. So it, I think it does make some career paths more, more difficult. The way I've got it set up now, because I work for myself... I do a lot of like, I love going on kind of retreats and personal development stuff. And I work while I'm away, but that element of travel just wouldn't be possible. You know, dragging a whole family with you, like one child, let alone, you know, m more than that. So no, like I, I've chosen the, 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 the path of the lifestyle that suits me, that lets me be the best version of me. Let me tell you now, if I was a mother, I would not be the best version of me. I would not be a lovely member of society. So <laughs> honestly, it's a real kindness that I've done to all of you. You can thank me, buy me a drink later. But honestly, it does not have, does not have kids. But, so you would identify that the, the work and traveling are the two things that you've really been able to do. I mean, a lot of women will say well you know I'm a mom and I work and I travel as well yeah. but be, again we keep talking about this freedom to be able to do this and I I moved country at 31 I, I up sticks and I moved to Malta 18 years ago and, and made that choice that would not be something I would have been able to have done easily yeah. with a family and a lot of people will say well I have a family and I've done it we're not disputing that and paramount respect to you if you have but for our experiences, you know, I went off to then off to Australia for a month and traveled around the bush. And then I went again to Australia. I went to the US and these sorts yeah. of things. And I know a lot of women who watch the show who are very, very keen on uh, evangelizing how much, how positive traveling is for children. But traveling with children yes. and traveling <laughs> alone are two yeah. different experiences. Yes you know, going into the Bronx in, in New York or going out into the bush on your own and these sorts of things, just things that you're not going to do with the kids that I've had the opportunity to do. I will also say one thing that came to mind whilst you were talking, I think, Alex, one advantage, one thing that I've seen through the she word is the incredible physical impact that having a family has on a woman. I literally had no idea, no idea about pregnancy, postpartum, parenthood, you know, getting your boobs back to where they <laughs> were. I will never forget Tamara Webb talking about the engorgement of her boobs on this show. Um, but there, there's changes to your body. And, and as we know, when you get to menopause, that's yeah. tough enough. But having to throw pregnancy into that the mix as well. So I just want to, we will come to that too about the physical, but for you, are there any, Maria, anything that you've done or had the opportunity to do that you would not have been able to do if you'd had a family? Well, I'm 31. So how do you say it? I'm like still in the time that I might opt to have children. So like I'm in the middle right now. So I I, I, there's still more to be done from my end and I have done things like for example um, when I was around 28 I changed my career um, I used to work in a lab I was a, team, a lab team leader and then I switched to marketing and it was a huge switch and it wasn't easy and I think I mean most of my friends at the age of 28 they were already raising kids if I had kids I couldn't do that I know why because I was I will be thinking okay um how what am I gonna do I will change my job if I don't succeed then I'm, I'm gonna leave again and 
there there is lots of thought. So I think that when you don't have kids, um, you can take decisions more free yeah. because there you don't need to take care of anyone. As I said, I mean, you don't need to think about other people how how it's gonna affect them. Um, so that was a huge, for example, for a huge leap for me because I changed my career. So I don't think that if I was raising kids, I would have had time to reflect and take that decision. It would, it won't be on my priority, on my priority list, you know. Priorities. That's a really important word, huh? That kind of summarizes everything that we've talked about here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they come along, and that's yeah, your yeah. whole pri- priorities, life, Completely personal. Shift. Yeah. Even shift, I think, just Get change re- completely. Re- 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 in reality. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It sums up what you're saying as well. Mm. You knew that your your mum and your dad had different priorities, yeah. and your priority is not to have a family. Yeah. And I think it's and, and as you said, Helen, your priority was traveling and to to work on the trading floor and so on and so forth. So it's I think your that you that use of the word priorities is incredibly yeah, I important. Think we all have priorities in life and some of us don't have the priority to become mums and it's nothing wrong with that because not every not everyone is the same. It's not everyone has the same call for life, you know. And that does not mean that because we don't want to be moms, we're monsters or we hate children or we're not like that. We just have our own thing to do. That's all. We're going to come to that discussion about being a monster <laughs> in a minute. But before we get to that, because I want to uh, stay with the 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 kind of the the positive. Um, before we move on to maybe the negatives, would you, if you could pass on a message to, to another woman, but maybe we'll stick with you, Alex, because we, if you have this conversation, do you ever find that your peers say to you, ah, no, maybe she's got a point? I think when I have this conversation with with other women my age, it's always, it's kind of like a bit of a mixed mixed response, let's say that where I have friends who ever since we were, I mean, eight, nine, ten years old, who, you know, will say like, oh, I, I just really want to be a mom and I can't wait to get to that point in life. And then I have other friends who are like, oh, I'd like to be a mom, but maybe later on in life. And then kind of friends like who think similar, similarly to how, to how I do and that we're always kind of been like, mm, no. <laughs> um, but I think to be fair, at least let's call it like the younger generation, like my generation. I think we're, women are a bit more open-minded in having this conversation. I think when I have this conversation with people, but specifically women who are older than me, the feedback is a little bit like, mm, like, why Why do you think that? You know, like, listen, it, it's important that, you know, motherhood is so important. It's, it's, it's like, yes, it is granted, but it's just not important for me to experience motherhood. And I think that there's a massive distinction and a massive difference between the importance of motherhood and the importance of me going through or rather experiencing motherhood. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it, I do like the fact that I can have this conversation and conversations like these where there is, there's an element of understanding and there's also an element of respecting the fact that, like I said before, I feel very strongly as in, I feel very strongly like this now, but that doesn't mean that in five, six, seven years' time, I might feel differently, and that is fine. So, and I do think that women um, are starting to kind of really pick up on that a little bit more, and that listen, priorities change, circumstances change, and people just change in general. Um, so yes, as in, I think that's that's kind of like the the usual vibe that I get. But I think it it really mu- it it does depend a lot on on who you're speaking to and uh, you know the upbringing and kind of like the way of life of the people that you're speaking to, if if that makes sense. Because obviously people have mm. very different like opinions and ideologies on you know womanhood, on what a, what is a family, what what is family to you. So obviously then you kind of have to like navigate yourself around those conversations depending on on who you're speaking to.
Well, you led me beautifully into a question that I have for Helen because you said you might change your mind. Yeah. Now, Helen is a woman who, is, Helen, you profess that you haven't changed your mind. This is, But have you never had a moment where you regretted your decision? You are at now, if you don't mind me saying, at an age where if you did change your mind, having a family is no longer an option. Have that you option. never had a moment where you thought, you know, I'd really have liked to have had a kid? I've not regretted it yet. Sometimes, and this is part of the menopause, when you wake up having one of those anxiety moments, I do wake up thinking, oh my God, who's going to look after me when I'm 80? <laughs> so I'm not, <laughs> so I kind of future regret it. No, you really do, actually. <laughs> regret it. But, but no, no, definitely not. And what I think is worth saying it, actually there's two things. I think it's worth saying is um, that... Uh, <laughs> I think even I thought, oh, maybe when I got, I was um, engaged for a long time, had a long-term relationship. And when I got together with him, we had the exact conversation and I very much urged people to have that conversation yep. very early and save yourself a lot of time and a lot of heartache. He wanted kids, I didn't. That relationship lasted eight years and it ended because of. he wanted kids and I didn't and I hadn't changed my and mind. And I wanted to avoid that thing because... Very wise. Wish you'd have told me <laughs> at the beginning. Um... We thought body clock would kick in. Yeah, exactly. We really wanted to be together. And, and and we talked about, okay, well, I will have them. Then he was like, no, we won't. And actually, it was just fairest, again, to be the best version of ourselves, that he go and have them. Exactly. And I just And you not. wouldn't want to stop anyone from, you know, exactly. seeing to their wants exactly. and goals and dreams. So it was made to have children. Exactly. He really was a natural father. My friends used to come around and bring their kids around. And he He'd would, be looking after them. Yeah. And you wouldn't like, want to take that away oh from him. Oh, my God, yeah. no. No, and that's ultimately what it was. I had to set him free to do yeah. that, and he had to set me free to live exactly. my life. Exactly. I was going to say, in fact, that it works both ways, that yeah. you wouldn't want to take that away from him, but he also wouldn't kind of want to yeah. take that, that away from you. Been, no. But, Helen, that must have been a hard breakup. Oh, that was, it was, yeah, it's, if yeah, one of the most, the hardest decisions in my life. We had, honestly, a perfect life. We were super happy even when we broke up it was a very at the beginning very amicable amicable breakup because we were breaking up for a reason that had always been yes. there we'd always known we'd always been very honest with each other and that had never changed we weren't breaking up because we didn't love each other we still did yeah. we just had an incompatibility that had always been there that you can't compromise <laughs> on it's like yes. oh well we'll have a part-time shop there's no compromise <laughs> yeah. right right there's no part-time children but sometimes oh. even what i what i don't like is that um you meet someone and tells you you will change your mind no you you no, cannot you expect won't. me like like yeah. to get into a relationship with you and you are already thinking that you're gonna change my mind i have my own like yes. she said my own personality exactly. my own identity if i want to change my mind yes i would i change but th there has to be consent like everything yes. is yeah. you cannot just say she is going to change your mind i mean i've seen relationships getting broken because people think that the woman or the man will change their mind, mind. Yeah. you cannot think that someone is gonna okay, change well, their mind let me ask you a question. You're 31 years old. You have a very loving relationship, but what if your partner turns around and says to you, you know what, I want to have kids? He knows. He knows that if today he comes and asks me for kids, I will tell him, I will let you go and have kids. But this day, present, while we're doing this podcast, I don't want kids. I'm not ready to have kids. And I tell him, so that is why it is important that as a couple, There's you agree on this decision yep. and you always agree on this decision. Like even before, for example, we bought our house. I have a spare bedroom, of course, because accidents happen sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> of course, but like even when we bought our house, I was speaking with him. Are you sure you want to do this? Because for till now, I don't want to have kids. Yep. Like because obviously you're buying a new house. Maybe you, you need to discuss these things between each other. Yep. It, like you discuss it. You, we discuss even what you're going to cook in the, in the evening you don't discuss a major decision which is going to affect two people yeah. so i think communication is the best thing about these things um sometimes it is not that easy with some people but i think you have to be straight put the cards on the table listen i want this this and this i don't want to break your heart but you cannot break yeah. mine alex is nodding <laughs> away there <laughs> yes. this is obviously something that you have faced are yes, facing yes. or will face yes and in fact as Sometimes it's funny, like if you're on a first date and you kind of get the vibe from someone that you might meet again, um, as maybe uncomfortable and, and 
random as it might be on a first date to be like, listen, I don't want kids. I think it's so important to yes, do it. Yes, it's I think it's so important date. to set the tone yeah. like oh, no, immediately. Yes. yes, yes. Don't waste. Yes. Yes. Don't waste time. Sort filter because quickly. I think. <laughs> yeah. No, so I left over there. With yes. with, yes. with emotional like invest, with emotional investment come the like the fantasies. You know what I mean? That you start meeting someone and you start thinking about being in a long term relationship with them, and then once kind of that develops, you start thinking yes. about moving in with. You know when you start to like fantasize about someone. You're, you're you're seeing in a sense and fantasizing about the steps that you you ought to take, and I think it's so important to just like slap it in the face. Is it not slap it in the face? Like, <laughs> but to just like throw Literally. it there and yeah. be like, don't listen. condone violence. And be, <laughs> no, never. Yes. But to just be like, listen, you know, this is something that this is how I feel. Yeah. Um, if I change my mind, it's on my terms, and I think that that is the most empowering thing that any, not just women. I think it's the most empowering thing that anyone can yes. can do that. You make it clear that, listen, this is how I feel. And changing my mind is on my terms and based on the circumstances of my life. So that is something that I'm, I'm super clear about. Oh, yeah. Don't waste As time. As uncomfortable. Don't waste <laughs> time. Because the response is always like, oh, okay. Like we just said. Unnecessary no. drama. <laughs> Take it. Yeah. But it's, I think it's so important to just... I just have visions there. of you being out on a date and <laughs> you're ordering your second drink. They come and you're like, as Not we even. put it down. I don't so even anyway. wait for the second drink. <laughs> <laughs> Not even second <laughs> drink. No, no, like no before, way. before I met my, my boyfriend, I, was, I also asked him if he has kids because that is another step. Yeah, if yes. he already has kids, it means that he's a family-oriented guy, yeah. which is nothing wrong. But it is not in my path. I couldn't imagine myself being eighteen and needs to start knowing a man and a kid. So you you need to be clear, and that does not mean that you're being rude. You're being clear with someone, listen, I want this in my life. You're showing someone that you know what you want. Yeah. And I don't, I think that is the most attractive thing about a person, that yes. they know what they want. I will put in context, uh, and he'll probably kill me for saying this, and so will so will his daughter, but I'm I'm married to a, to a fantastic guy who has a daughter. And when we met, she was already late teens. And she is amazing. And he is an incredible father. She doesn't need another mother. She absolutely doesn't. She, To me, she's more like a little sister. And that relationship for me is brilliant. But I will have to say, and this is what he's going to kill me for, is that he wanted to have that topic, that conversation. So when we started dating, he kept saying, oh yeah, I want to have kids, I want to have kids. Because he was testing the waters to find out whether <laughs> I did or not. It absolutely horrified me because I'm, I was in my mid forties by that point and thinking, no. <laughs> and we nearly split up because he kept saying that he wanted to have kids. And eventually I said to him, sweetness, if that's what you want, I'm the wrong girl. And he's like, yeah. oh, thank goodness. I yeah. said, why didn't you just ask me if I wanted kids? And he's like, I wasn't quite sure how to. But isn't that true? Isn't that a point that we don't know how to have this discussion? I mean, apart from Alex, who's obviously <laughs> asked the question before the first drink gets landed on the table. Um, but it is. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a tricky thing to talk about, is it not? Um, I think it's not a tricky thing. I think the society made exactly. that thing. I think the pressure starts first when are you going to have your period? Because if you don't get your period at the age of 11, they start panic. Oh my God, my daughter is not normal. She will not have kids. That's yes. where the pressure starts. Whoa. Then once you get You're your... Are serious? Yes, of yes. course. In Malta, we have this saying, like in English, it is um, the cheat fell off the stairs. Okay. But in Malta, we say, what well, at a The cheese fell off the stairs. Like, pe women ask their woman if their daughters got their periods. Sorry, Helen and I just look at each other. Yes. I actually and I have think never, <laughs> in, in 18 years, I've never yeah. heard the it's cheese like, falling off the stairs. It's definitely like a Mediterranean yes. type culture where it's yes. like, it's, you know, your, your daughter gets to a certain age and like family members are like yes. discreetly asking yes. your mom, like if you, which is so invasive and yes. strange oh, and odd. Like like, the relative of my mom but asking that, you know. And I told her, why is she asking you why I fell off the stairs? Like, what kind <laughs> no, of woman is that? Yeah. And she told me, she was referring to your period. I was like, yeah. it's not, a, it's none of her business yeah. if I got my period or not, you know. Yeah. But yes, so that is the first pressure. If you got your period or not. Like, I remember at school, girls discussing if they got their periods. And if you didn't get your period. It was like, yeah, you don't have your period yet. <laughs> I guess. No, I don't have my period yet. It, it's... Yeah. So that is already the first <laughs> pressure. So you know that yeah. at that age, you're going to start feeling the pressure that you need to like be a woman who can carry children. Mm -hmm. Basically. Wow. Honestly. Yeah. Yes, right. I'm with know. Helen on that. Because maybe, maybe because we 
grew up in a different culture mm, and we yes. didn't have that. Maybe it was because we're marginally a couple of years, one or two years older. Um, <laughs> no, no, but but that's certainly it's, not anything. I mean, yeah. we have a show coming up in a couple of weeks on menstruation, and you've just given me a lot of yes. a lot of mileage to ask yeah. about that because that's that's incredibly important. I mean, whether you're being asked about how fertile you yes. are at a young age. And it's something that I think yeah. is so is so normal. Like I remember I, I got my first period the day we had like a family function. I think like a cousin's oh, baptism. So oh my gosh. Oh. Like and I was oh. meant to wear I know and I sobbed for like two hours before I'm told I'm like, oh something's wrong with you. She's like, no, it's just got your period. Like <laughs> chill. <laughs> um but I was lucky in that sense because my mom is very like open minded and very like, kind of like relaxed about these yes, things in the sense mom. that she kind of spoke to me and said, like, listen, yes, I mean, this is what was supposed to happen. And she told me, like, I've, I've known that you were going to get it for the past, like, five months. But then I remember when we got to this family function, I was meant to wear a white dress, which I obviously did not wear because, you know. Um, and I remember it was, like, the the, the talk of, of the event. Oh, Alex got her period. Alex got her period. How sweet <laughs> Alex got her this period. This girl has to pass <laughs> that. Like, I just wanted to stay home and cry in bed. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Was just disgusting. Oh, my word. But and it's and I really agree with that where it starts from there and then you you know you kind of take you finish school and then you go either study or you start working and you kind of get into your twenties and it's like I kind of see it now where I'm twenty three I'm I mean not in a relationship and it's like oh you know haven't you thought about maybe you know like meeting someone <laughs> or you know like a lot you get like fed up of everyone you know when you're too happy on your own so it starts with those comments and then I guess kind of you maybe. It's something that you've experienced yourself as well, kind of like later into your 20s where it's like, listen, you know, are you going to get married? So it's, but then funnily enough, there's also this like opposing view where people are really invested in whether or not you go to your period. But at the same time, like as a teenager, and I think now even kind of into your 20s, given I think that like the time frame of, I think w- when someone's pregnant at 23, I think like by today's standards, it's like, wow, she's she's so young. Whereas, I mean, my mom had me when she was like mm-hmm. 23, 24. So, and it was like the normal, whatever normal is um, time to have kids. But then there's also that opposing view where it's like until that certain point of when it's okay and society is fine with you having kids, there's this like, oh, but don't get pregnant. So yes. if you're, you know, 18, 19, 16, 17, or even in your early 20s, don't, don't get pregnant. Yes. Um, but then still, the minute that you kind of hit what society deems as the time to have kids, it's like, um, Wait till hello? you're 30. Then you, you know? start, everyone will start to remind you your age. Exactly. Well, and your biological clock. And I hate that phrase, the biological clock. But <laughs> on leading into the yeah. next question, and I'm going to throw this one at Helen first and come back to you guys because you've just touched right on it judgment have you ever been negatively judged for your decision I mean literally as you were saying that I'm like you try and get into 48 (laughs) and you're not married yet oh okay um it's was it's been more about you'll change your mind you'll change your mind you'll change your mind yes rather than I've not had anything kind of too negative to be honest but I think that's because like a lot of my friends I've always been like that and I so own that decision like that you know we talked about identity yeah. it's so part of my identity I am not a mother yeah. that there's no so even if somebody said you're selfish you're this you're that you're that fine and, and it wouldn't land as hard because I've known it for so long yeah. and I've chosen that and it's part of my identity and also kind of something we touched on earlier I have so many kids in my life I basically have 12 godchildren so I am not short of kids (laughs) in my life I'm not I you know I don't feel I'm missing out on something I, I love kids. I just like them in two-hour batches. Yes. <laughs> you no. kids, yeah. You've got the kids you can hand yeah. back. Yeah. Exactly. I, and, and, and again, like that's the best way for me to have them. I rock up, fun time Helen, auntie, yes. brings yeah. presents, yeah, 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 wind them up and then <laughs> back to your mom. back and like, <laughs> see you later. Give them loads of sugar and give them back to the parents. I think that that element of judgment is so based on the fact that unfortunately we still view women or rather we still like base our opinions on women kind of subsequently based on 
motherhood and women yes. having to be mothers. So it's like the, the advice that you always give to a young girl, to a young woman is always centered around the idea of having kids, mm. you know? So it's like when I started studying um, and I kind of started, you know, I, I always made my, my ambitions clear. It was always like, oh, what, what about the kids? Like, why aren't you asking me about what I want to specialize in? Why aren't you asking me about, you know, what, what my career goals? Why are you so concerned about the fact that I might... I won't have the time to raise kids. Why are you assuming that that is, you know, where you have, you'll have a woman who's, you know, sharing her views on, on how she wants to, to, you know, set the path for her life and sharing her ambitions. And you're asking me about why I don't want to have kids. Like, I'm literally telling you that I want to do, you know, something with my life and that's, but because we're so used to centering women's identities around being yeah. mothers yeah. that yeah. it's kind of like you're, a woman, so you you have that, oh, you, but you'll feel the maternal instinct, it will come. But I don't feel you know? it, and it's so okay, and it's it's not something that I think about. I say, you know, I don't feel that maternal. If I, when I see a baby, like, I will acknowledge the fact that a baby is cute, I guess, but I won't, you know, I, I don't <laughs> feel... I don't feel that that urge I, to... I know what you like, mean. I, have, I love the way you we, said. We know what you mean. Like, <laughs> cute, I guess. I guess. No, but I have cousins, I have loads of cousins who have loads of children so I've you know again I, I'm there are many children in my life and many babies in my life but if I have a cousin who tell me you want to hold the baby no I don't want to hold the baby and if I do hold the baby it's the most like awkward and my mom really, I really enjoy like, holding the baby it's like no. when I see them I really enjoy holding exactly, the baby but, but when I feel like something in the nappy I'm like <laughs> like mm, why is this warm <laughs> this is not <laughs> mine like, take care of oh, this um, like and I think that it's so okay that you know women just have different women have different instincts and it just because a woman has instincts does not mean that it's a maternal instinct Alex, it's okay. It's perfectly okay. But I'm going to come back to the question of judgment because it's not okay for everyone. And I oh. think maybe even Helen and I have the advantage that we grew up in a very different culture. Uh, we had very strong role models who were women in, yeah. in society and and not necessarily associated with parenting. And maybe that's something that's part of the Maltese culture simply because you mentioned periods and I've never heard that before oh, cheese falling whoa. off the stair um, but I'm going to take that home with me but Maria have you felt judgment have you been to your peers uh, children's parties and felt judged because you don't have a child with you yes I think I have felt um before, when someone used to ask me, like, if you're not thinking of children, I used to say, maybe when I'm 28. But then I was like, listen, I need to take a stand. And whoever asks me now, I'm like, you know, that is not an appropriate question to ask. Ooh. Because you cannot keep yeah. just hiding behind the bush and say, yeah. and to please people, because it's not fair. And it's not fair on you because you are hiding, you know. You're you really say that? No, yes, I started to say it. I, I took a, because. <laughs> it's a high five. Oh yeah, too dumb. Right? Because it, it is no. First of all, it is none of your business. Maybe I cannot have children. Why are you asking, asking me when me. I will I have children? Yeah. Secondly, I was speaking to Helen there once, and um, there was this girl, and she told me, you know, now people will think that you are the bad seed, that you are infertile if you don't have children because people from previous relationships had children. And I am like, do people have that kind of energy to think about these things? I was still young at this stage when I heard this thing. And I was like, what? People think about... Uh, and what is wrong with not being able to have children? I mean, there are women who cannot have children. There is nothing wrong with them. And I think that's a really important point as well, because we're having a, a show that about women who are child free. And there are some of us who can't have children. Yeah, exactly. And there's some of us who've been called out in public situations, which has been devastating and heartbreaking. And I think for every single person who's watching this show, I would ask really graciously, be careful what you say. Yes. Because the day I found out I couldn't have kids, somebody asked me, 
you know, accused me of being selfish for not having kids. And you don't know what anybody's oh. personal situation no, you is. No, I ha I can clearly see the advantages in my life for not having had a family. But I, that judgment that you're talking about is is really, really Like tough. you don't go on another woman who has children and ask her, what made you have kids? <laughs> you never ask that. Exactly. <laughs> you just that's say, weird. hi, hello, how cute is your baby? And that's it. You don't go to another woman and ask her, what, why, did, what, you decide why did you decide to have kids? Will you be having any more kids? And how, you, you don't ask that kind of question. So why do you see a woman who does not have kids and you have yeah. the decency to ask her? But then, sorry for, for, for but I think, this really, really goes back to the idea of because we so kind of heavily base women's identities on being mothers. So obviously, if you see a woman who's a mother, it's like, okay, you know, she's a woman and she yes. kind of did what what was expected in like five million inverted commas, expected of her. But then if you see a woman who doesn't have kids and you kind of notice that they've clearly kind of either taken a decision or they... It's, it's suddenly fine to ask, yes. you know, so it all kind of goes back to that, that perception. Wow. And then you listen to the question like, but you're going to regret it <laughs> when you're older. You're going to be in your house alone and say, I didn't have kids. And I'm like, <laughs> you're going to be found dead be by just fine. your cat. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> a little lovely thought. Yes. It's, stop with the cats there, Helen. Stop with the cats. Don't get eaten by your cats. <laughs> but you know, it is not something right to to say to someone, you know? No, no. That leads me on to nicely to the, to another question, which is bearing that in mind, are you, and I'm probably not so much for you, Alex, yeah. but for these, these two ladies, are, are you more drawn to other women who don't have children? Has there been a period in your life where your friends are having kids and you felt excluded or, or just felt like you weren't part of the gang? I know for me that that has been a, a, an episode. My friends never excluded me because they always knew that I don't want children. They always know. And like last time we were in a party or a kid's party and my friend and, and my and we were joking, like, you know, and my friend was like, with the glass of wine, she kids, <laughs> you're joking. She was like looking at the people because she knows me. She t she tells me, I know you. You, you, I know you, you have always been like that, you know, and that is what I appreciate. And I think um, the older you get, the, 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 the smallest the circle will be of your friends, whether they have kids or not, you just stick with those who appreciate your opinion. Um, I'm not going to meet a friend who's looking at me all the time, telling me to have kids. Obviously, I don't have time to waste. Yeah. Yeah. Helen? Yeah. I mean, certainly, like, in our, I guess, 30s, when all my friends started having kids, it's not like kind of they excluded me or I excluded myself, but it it's so all-encompassing that it just kind of took them away and that yeah. was their focus. And then they had friends from NCT classes or... Basically, they're, they're rightly so. It's almost kind of a new hobby, isn't it? You get a new hobby and it's all you can talk <laughs> about. I had nothing to talk. I had nothing in common. And then we would get together and all they'd talk about was poop. <laughs> Do you know how dull your baby's poo is for somebody who doesn't have kids? Honestly, you're like, I don't care what is in your child's nappy. Can I just say dog dog owners do the same thing. We talk an awful lot about yes. our dog's crap. <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. So like, so at, at that point, there was never like a problem. You know, it's not, you don't fall out. It's just like, we, right now, we really don't have much in common because I'm off, you know, exactly traveling the world or doing like my own thing. They're obsessed with this new bundle of joy that they've got in their life. And I'm like, <laughs> I cannot relate to that. Yes, yeah. true. You know, and, you know, that and was their fine. soul. Folk. And in this, exactly. But let me tell you that that obsession soon wears off and they're like, tell me what you're doing. And I want to live vicariously through you. Where are you traveling to next? I'm like, oh, okay. Welcome back to the interest in me again. You see, this is, I was going to ask you this. Have you found in your experience, have you found that, in, and in, in for both of you, I'm probably not so much for you, Alex, but again, um, but certainly for you, have you found that mums or new mums are jealous of your child-free existence. I heard mom saying that, like, if they knew what they were getting into, they wouldn't have kids. Oh, yeah. They were not jealous because, obviously, they love their kids. But some moms, they don't know what they're getting into. You know, like, 
how drastically their life is gonna change. Yeah. I mean, even with with your partner is gonna change your life because like I don't like maybe I sound babyish, I don't know, but I love the attention I get from my partner. I don't want to share it with anyone else. <laughs> I know it's uh, yeah. but you know, some like relationships also get changed when you have kids because first you're two people all you have is each other like you your 100 attention is each other then all of a sudden there is an like even if you get a puppy at home all the attention is on the puppy so imagine if you have a kid and this you both like it's yours like obviously the priorities are gonna change again yeah. Yeah. it's not jealousy from new kind of mums or mums with small kids because I think exactly they're cute they're adorable they're in that whole oxytocin phase and like this thing's the center of the universe you try talking to to parents of teenagers (laughs) my god (laughs) Helen's face Uh, at that that point they're like oh my god like when can we go out I need to escape can we book something in the diary when are you over next like I need to see you I need the funniest (laughs) part is when your friends have teenagers, they go out clubbing and you're still clubbing and you're meeting their teenagers <laughs> and not their moms and dads. They're like, hi. <laughs> I knew you were, you were a baby. <laughs> yeah, that just shows your age. <laughs> but then, do you, so going back to this this whole thing of the circle of, of parenting, and, and I'm, I guess this is more for you, Helen. I certainly found when my peers were having kids that there was a distance and I that's when I was traveling and then came full circle back to having a relationship with them yeah. uh, when they are older and their kids are, are now in teenagers and late teenagers and mo- maybe moving on a little bit and I found that p- relationships relationships evolve yeah Yep. Yes. always friends you pick up friends you drop friends you have for periods of life and friends some friends you have forever but I've certainly found with with friends of mine who are, have children that that evolved as well but what I also found going back to this whole idea of are uh, is there any sort of fear or do you ever feel like that you're being judged we've I have three fantastic friends that have just had kids and they've all been on the she word uh emily maxine and tez and what surprised me was when i went to see them how readily they picked up their kids and handed them to me and then i realized how much parents beforehand hadn't oh that they had gone a full circle. Finally, I'm in my 40s and people think I'm pe- old enough, mature enough to pick up a child. But my friends had gone full circle and different friends, different ages had, had now started to warm to the fact that I was not some sort of monster. <laughs> Coming back to the topic of monster, because we saw who said monster. I think you used the word yeah. monster. I think some women, when you say you don't want kids, that's what they think you are, mm. that you're a, you're a monster, that you don't have love to give. But that... Inf- it's not that. No. No. I mean, like Helen said, I, I have lots of children around me and I enjoy my time with them. And oh my God, I, I cannot imagine something bad will happen to them, but I cannot imagine taking care of them 24-7 then. Like if they need me, I am there for them. Like uh, like I, I enjoy babysit. Like sometimes I call my sister, can I come to play a bit with 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 your, with, with my nephew? Of course I do that, but that is my two hours. It's not yeah. like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the poop and it goes back <laughs> exactly <laughs> no I had the same like people were like you're so great with them because I get down like actually there's lurking underneath there is this just this big kid inside so if my friends are, like my friends kids are into Pokemon like let's go down and Pokemon Teenage Mutant Ninja whatever it is I'm like let's get down and let's play and they're like you're great with ki- children I'm like yes again for two hours <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done <laughs> give me that 24 hours yeah. no way Listen, I can't believe that we're coming to the end of this show. It's been incredible and and each of you have said the most really profound statements and I think it's something that we can all take home with us. Alex, I'm going to come to you because you said something that really blew me away for a 23-year-old to talk about the fact that your parents had gave you such a great upbringing that at this point to even think of having a family with your other priorities, I'm going to come back to that word, priorities would be disrespectful to a potential yep. family. So I'm going to ask each of you to to share a word, a thought or, or a parting 
comment. And I'm going to start with you because that really touched me. The very fact that you're 23 years old and you, you're already identifying the amount of commitment yes. that a family would take. And I don't think a lot of young women, as we've said, are possibly aware of that. Mm. I think for me, and it's something that I'm, I've always been very grateful for, is that I have a very open relationship with my parents and that we have a lot of these discussions, um, you know, about just life, womanhood, my career, what I kind of like want, where, where I see myself in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So it's always something that we've always been very comfortable speaking out, even with my dad. So there are certain, let's like what we'd call maybe like girlier issues that I would typically have with my mom, which I still also do have with my dad. So I think that sense of openness has, I think I'm aware of that level of commitment that is required and the level of, you know, the, the, the sacrifices that are behind raising a child, because my parents have always been very open about the fact that they make sacrifices. And I think we kind of tend maybe to shy away from being open about the fact that, listen, I have to sacrifice mm -hmm. this. I think a lot of parents will hide the sacrifices that they make from their kids, you know, to kind of maybe shelter them from, let's say, the realities of parenthood, whatever those are. But my parents were always very open about the fact that there were certain sacrifices that they had to make. And I'm so glad that they were open about it because it gave me that clarity. You know, I was never, obviously they sheltered me in such a way where, you know, they protected me and they nurtured me in the way that any parent would. But they were also open about about the fact that, listen, having having children isn't easy. And interestingly, so does my grandmother do the same thing. And obviously my grandmother comes from a totally different generation. Um, but my grandmother um, had my mom when she was 34, 35 because she wanted to study, she wanted to work before she had kids. And that's what she did, which at the time was like, you know, she was the eldest out of 12 wow. siblings, but she did it. And she retired when I was around five, six years old, I think. Um, so I kind of always had like a melting pot of, of uh, you know, opinions and perceptions and, you know, perceptions on the realities of parenthood. So I think that is where... It, that played such a massive role in in the way that I think, and I, I, I think I will continue to think that way for for quite some time. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic word of wisdom to 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 conclude your your thoughts on. I think you, Maria, you just blew. Helen and I away when you just turned around and said, none of your business. <laughs> yeah. We're all sitting around the table going, wow, I wish we'd said that. <laughs> any closing thoughts from yourself, any words of wisdom for anybody who's in your position, who might be coming into your position, who, who would also like to turn around and go, actually, you know what? None of your business. No, I think you should um, always never let anyone change your thoughts. I mean, you know what you want. This is your life, your decision. And Technically, it is none of others' business because this is not some decision. This is not a reversible re decision. So if you have kids, you need to take care of them. So if you don't want kids, don't care of other of what people say. It, don't care that you're going to end up alone. There are there are um, these care centers. They can, can take care of you, you know. <laughs> but because if you keep overthinking and overthinking your decision, you just need to say, okay, what do I want? What do I want from my life? If you want kids, maybe when I'm 40, I say, oh my God, I should have had kids. But at, right now, I'm 31 and this is what I want. And I don't want anyone to stay trying to change my decisions. It's, you know, it's, it's not right. So... If you don't want kids right now or in any part of your life, you don't need to justify it to anyone. Yep. It is your decision. That's it. As long as you have an agreement with, if, if you're in a relationship, you ha mm. should have an agreement with yep. your partner and to be open about it because it is not fair that obviously you hide it from someone because that is not fair on the other part of the table, you know, but you need to be clear about your decision and that's it basically. What incredible wisdom from two um, remarkable young ladies around the table. Helen, yeah. I'm going to leave it with you. for As, as a lady of um, experience, I'm going to leave it for you for the, the closing word from your, from your perspective. You've obviously lived a full life without having had children. Yeah, absolutely. And that was my choice. And I think if you are thinking about it and you do have the option for it to be your own choice, 
make sure, you know, it, it's kind of like what we talked about. Make sure it's your choice. Don't do this. Don't go ahead and have them or not have them because of your partner, because of your mother, because of your mother-in-law. Mm. God, really, <laughs> really. <laughs> like, what do you want? Really think about that. What are your values? What are your priorities? Make sure it's your decision for your reasons. Not because society says you should do this. Not because you're, you know, my dad, God bless him, would have loved grandchildren. And I that's something, again, I've had to go through and really own that. He's never going to get to be a biological grandfather. But I can't make a decision for somebody else. This yeah. is wow. my life. And I have to make the decision that's right for me because that's what makes me the best version of me. So what is going to make you the best version of you? And I think that applies to lots of things in life, not just yep. motherhood or not. Ladies, I might, one thing that surprised me so much about this podcast is how much respect there is around this table for mothers and motherhood. Huge. And I think that's the foundation of so much of this conversation <laughs> because we mentioned before that, uh, or you did, you mentioned that, that people might, come out with hate speech or be yes, be aggressive sometimes. and so on. And I think the very, I'm going to chin chin because I think the very yes. paramount thing is respect for motherhood. And here also it's being child free. Yes. Cheers. 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 That's us. We're done. That was flipping Ooh. awesome.